Thank you. It's my understanding I'm between you and lunch. And so with that, uh, I'm going to endeavor to be as clear and sharp as possible uh, and, and take you through what we think is recognition of the environment we have today, methods and, and thought processes we engender and we see people thinking about how to build solutions using low-code solutions, and, and last, some client examples. Our background in this is at any point in time, we've got about 700 projects running with clients. The average project is something in the magnitude of 8 to 12 to 16 weeks. We come in and we help clients get it done as persistent systems. Uh, we help them see beyond their current environment, current challenges, and we help them rise above where they're going into the vision, into the delivery of what they want to be with their solutions at the same time. So we'll talk a little bit about why we're here. How many of you have a flip phone? Raise a hand if you use a flip phone today. Nobody raised their hand. That's amazing, right? So why are we here? We're here because the world has gone composable. Let's talk about our own personal lives. Let's go back to 2010. The tablet was introduced. It's nine years ago. There were no tablets before 2010. Now our lives are completely different because we have tablets. Let's go back to 2014. Applications or appliances, appliance vendors in our homes suddenly started shipping out smart appliances in mass. And we accepted them, and now we have smart appliances in our home and smart connectivity and talking devices. And if you go into 2016, car manufacturers introduced self-driving cars in mass. And just last week, the state of Virginia announced that it was piloting self-driving trucks going through the state. Why do I point all this out? In our own personal lives, when technology shifts, we pull out the piece that's old and we bring in the piece that's new and we put it back down. We as individuals, by habit, are dynamically composable. We're already agile, we're working on ourselves, and to the keynote that Paulo gave today, we are continuously self-evaluating ourselves for improvement, we're agile in the way that we approach technology, we take out the old, we put in the new, and we adapt. And if you look backwards in time, you're like, well, that's amazing, I don't know how I live without this today. So here we sit in a paradigm shift as well of equal proportions in the business world that's in front of us. And the paradigm shift in front of us is the advent of composable, dynamic, agile environments that engender the digital technology suite that we have in front of us. And the question that we have is, so how do we take advantage of it? And how do we best use it? We are at this point today where digital services exist. They're here. They're right in front of us. To the point all the way back to the keynote, you could always go decide to put in a monolithic system but then you wouldn't be different from anybody else. And why do you want to be different from somebody else? The reason you want to be different from somebody else is for two primary reasons. Attack your competition with new services and new agile skills that let you bring services to market quicker. Something new, something speedy, something people didn't have before. Second reason is why you want to be different from everybody else is you want to attack your cost. I'm faster internally, I'm running with options of how I do it. I can shift, and because I went composable, I can take something out, I can put a new one in when I want to, into that slot, and I can keep running going. In this is a paradigm shift of where we've been, right? Cloud got introduced, we all saw clouds come out, so we experimented. We've all run projects, we've all kind of experimented with services, and we realized, oh, that's a pretty complicated world if I try to stick build it with base services. We went on to piloting projects and moving with projects, and now we're in the full-scale development and deployment stage, and people like OutSystems come to mind to help you solve those problems in an excellent way of coalescing services that otherwise you would spend time writing. And they create this idea of how you can move faster, and they deliver on it with the promise of the technology that we see and we heard about this morning whether that's at the integration phase or whether that's all the way up at the experience level, it's about being able to use those building blocks for speed. So what stands in front of you when you think about this and what stands in the way when we talk to our customers, 
One is you've got a lot of choices. You have a lot, a lot of choices of what technology can include, and if you turn around every day, there are additional digital companies coalescing services together, asking that they be part of their, their building blocks or part of the mosaic of how you're gonna build your business. The second thing that's in front of you is this complexity of integration. You have in front of you an integration challenge in terms of the pieces you select and how they work with the other pieces as well as how they communicate with your legacy systems. And you're gonna have this environment for some time to come, it's the world we face today, but you won't get to the key benefits, which is attacking your competition or controlling your costs, unless you embrace these two things. One is you accept the fact there's a lot of choices. The second thing is that you embrace the fact that you're going to be figuring out where to drive and how to drive integration at the same time. What we see often when we work with clients is we see this type of mosaic getting put up there in front of us. And this is a minor subset. I'll show you the one for banking a little bit later on, but this is just your average starting point, which is there's a lot of choices to be made, and there's vendors in each of these spots. The good news is people like OutSystems help coalesce these boxes and give you rational starting points for being able to drive to value faster. On the other side of the coin, you have decisions to make on how you want to get this done and where you want to integrate in, what your cloud infrastructure will provide, on up into the different types of services that are out there. And what you have to understand on top of this is how do you create the outcome your business wants? Because you can spend a lot of time integrating technology, but if you don't approach this as the idea that you're building value, you won't get there. 40% of the digital projects today fail, and they fail largely when we see them and we often get called in to help. And typically one of the buttons we have in Persistent is the help button. We often get the phone call where it's like, huh, come help us. And we come in and the first thing we try to lay out is have you decomposed your patterns into the areas of value you want? Have you focused on creating a mosaic of what do you want? Do you need a transactional system? Do you need a forms-based processing system? Are you going to end users? What do those end users look like? What kind of experience will they drive out of this? And this helps us bring our clients and the people we work with to companies like OutSystems because it helps us provide coalescing points. But it's important as you think about that, that you think about how you're gonna coalesce value and that you look at it from the top down. What is that value that the user is gonna get? What scenario am I engendering to the business? And how do I take that through the experience level into the other components that I choose? And my diagram is meant to be representative, not authoritative, right? But the diagram represents that you have to choose things along the way. You'll have legacy systems that'll represent things like your CRM. You'll have uh, solutions that'll come in from vertical platforms. You'll have analytics layers and AI layers you'll want to apply. And, and you'll have infrastructures, probably more than one, at the cloud level that you'll be thinking about joining, using, and taking best advantage of. And, and your challenge is to compose the pattern. One of the things that we try to do when we think about this is can we compose a pattern that has high degree of reusability inside that enterprise? And I would encourage all of you to think about this as well. The more reusable the pattern is inside the enterprise, the more you can swap components as need be into your future and get that agile, decomposable world that we know you want to have. It's a, it's a thoughtful discussion because the world is complex in terms of the choices. The good news is the choices are there. The good news is when used correctly, they're weapons. They're weapons on attacking your competition and they're weapons on controlling your cost. And if you can see beyond the choices you got, you can rise above your competition, you can rise above your costs as, as we attack you know, the, the world of tomorrow with today's technology. So how do you think about this? And my friends at Deloitte and earlier this morning, there were conversations that hit around this. We think about this in a very, very prescriptive manner. And if there's something I can impart to you today in any one key message is the method is just as important as anything else you'll see. On the far left-hand side of this, it's about how you internalize yourself. And you need to run a process where you have an internal realization of 
what am I going after? Am I going after costs? Am I attacking my competition? Am I being attacked? You need to ask yourself, what's the risk that goes along with the disruption? And, and the risk that goes along with disruption is everything from a bottom line that you're not helping to somebody else got there first. And they're attacking me with this, and if I don't figure out how to outmaneuver them or get to a different market, I get disrupted. You might want to be the disruptor. You have an idea, and you want to be being able to bring it in a market without a brick and mortar substance, and you want to just go attack. And then the desire to be able to drive for change and growth. So if you ever go to somebody's house and they pull out a bunch of flip phones, they do have cell phone technology. They are connected. They can make phone calls to people, but when you see somebody pull out a flip phone, you don't always look at them as the, the modern place that you want to be. And I think this is the question in front of you as you look at your own environments in terms of where you are today to where you want to be, and the competition's coming in from all angles from this digital format. The examples are in front of every business we see and in front of every industry that's out there, whether it's from hospitality, to whether it's to transportation, to whether it's from consumer services, to whether it's how business to business transactions are getting done in manufacturing. Every business is thinking through how are they going to create new services, be more agile, and expand beyond the brick and mortar business. And I'll bring you a few examples that go along with that as we talk. So the world is full of these industries that are, that are trying to attack this way. Um, and, and you've got to make sure that your industry, you think about value. You think about the value you want to deliver and how you want to get there. And then out of that comes the technology pattern that you want to implement. And in this mosaic that you're going to create, you're going to have to pour glue in between the tiles to get your picture complete. And so you need to think about how you want to get the glue done and what companies like OutSystems provide you the best starting point for doing the minimal amount of work so that you can rapidly progress to value in your enterprise. And, and that's the key discussion we, we see many clients trying to have. Uh, we see clients engendering technology first discussions. We usually end up having to apply a lot of effort and help there. Well, we made all of our choices. We went to each vendor and we selected them all. We got these guys here, these guys here, these guys here. We checked all the boxes. There's another art a whole layer deeper to make sure that the compatibility, the value, the work process that you want to drive actually works end to end. And in that comes out the new values that you want to engender with your clients at the same time. Let's go talk about banking for a minute. Banking is not about to be disrupted, it is being disrupted. If you are not a bank and you want to have a digital wallet, do you need to go to a financial service to get that today? The answer is maybe. Two years ago it was yes, you must go work with a major financial provider to get a digital wallet. Today it's maybe. You can compose those services on your own and you can be your own digital wallet. To get a loan originated, to go do financial transactions, to work with the Swift engine and be able to do check processing and ACH transfers, do you need to go work with a major financial institution today if you are a non-bank? Two years ago, the answer was yes. This year, the answer is no. We have clients and we see clients that are doing composable systems using capabilities such as the capabilities without systems along with specific financial services to create a mosaic, a picture that allows them to provide financial services where in the past they would have to give that money to somebody else. So what's happening? If you've got thousands or millions of clients or you've got a need to interact or you loan money or you borrow money or you provide money or you want to do financing as a part of your business, you can do this with your own composition of online services. You just have to be prepared to tackle the picture. And the picture is quite simply a much more deeper picture than the one I showed you earlier. It's a specific financial services and banking set of services that are out in the industry, led by companies like Mambu, making breakthroughs in terms of what they do, and led and supported by vendors such as AWS underneath, and supported at the experience level by people like Alf Systems you can construct your own mosaic, your own tile that allows you to provide services. 
And you can have your own savings account, you can do your own checking accounts, you can do your own term deposits without having to be a member of some major financial institution that takes some percentage off the top. The disruption in digital banking is here today. It's available for everybody to take advantage of, and we work with clients that are in the banking community, the credit union community, and in non-banks. And the non-bank part is fascinating. I had a conversation the other day with a gentleman. He says, I have a million clients that walk in and out of my door every month, and I'd like to put over here in the corner the ability to offer them money. Money they borrow, money they use, money they own, money they trade, money they swap. I want to create my own wallet so they can get credits. They come to my store three times a week anyway so they can get a wallet from me. I can put my coupons and credits in there and they have their own wallet. But I don't want to pay anybody to do this if I can put it up my own. Why would I give that money away? If you know how to put the service together, you know how to do it. And in today's environment, this is what people are thinking through. So what are they doing while well, they're attacking? If you're a non-bank, like a retailer, you can attack your competition with something like this. If you're in the community of a credit union or you're in the community of a bank or your regional capability, you can separate yourselves from others with this at the same time. You can drive to your bottom line with the way that you do this. It's about the composition of services. It's available today. We know how to do it. Others know how to do it. And we see it in the marketplace as just an example of what people are actually tackling and why we saw a lot of demonstrations on the sexiness of the application on your phone, the work is underneath here. And it's this whole set of things that, that people are tackling and thinking through. But this pattern we repeat, this pattern the industry now can repeat and do over and over again. And we have clients today that are rolling this out at Bayport, Prius Bank, Gojico, uh, and, and they're bringing their clients, member banks and member institutions to the table to talk about how they can bring this value to them at the same time, creating checking and savings accounts, digital customer experiences, loan origination, loan fees, everything in between. From high-end services to low-end services, we see the environment taking place around the digital banking community today, and, and it's right in front of you. Uh, we're going to do this example in richness, and if you remember this chart that I showed you, let's see if it goes back. We're going to test the technology. Hey, we went backwards. If you remember this chart, every industry has their own mosaic. This is the picture we put up to do digital banking. It's a different picture you put up when you're thinking about manufacturing systems. It's a different picture you put up when you think about retail systems and retail marketing and commerce. It's a different picture that you put up when you think about uh, medical, healthcare, et cetera, the concepts are all the same, the services provide, and in that myriad of people that are now building digital services, you weave your way through to the value that you want to have, which is up top, these things on the right. If you look at the right side of this chart, this is what you want. This is what you deliver to customers. Loans, savings accounts. What they don't want to see is all this other stuff to the left, but this is the problem that we have to tackle. And this is the way that we think about it, is we think about these as pictures and snapshots. So I mentioned these clients, but we do this with other people as well. Artel. So um, when you go to do sampling of, of chemicals, a lot of times it's medical, but not 100% of the time, you need to calibrate what comes from the pipette into the test tube well. And you need to understand what your dev deviations are. You need to understand what the sample validity is when you go to run your tests. You need to understand your drift when you look back a week to the next week and understand have the samples and their compositions drifted at the same time. Right, so underneath this is the notion of automation. What you're testing changes dynamically. And what's popular to test one week completely shifts the next. So the idea that you're going to write a monolithic single application that's going to calibrate one chemical forever, you could do. It's the hard way. It's much better if you think about yourself as a composable application where you're swapping the pieces and the metrics and the intelligence that goes around the data versus, versus thinking about it as a per chemical monolith. Work we did with Artel Systems is about that digital calibration experience. We built it using a digital platform. 
Uh, we built it as a way and a methodology for them to be able to bring in new components, work faster than their competition, attack their competition at lower cost, as well as we constructed training modules to go with this, because you gotta teach people how to use the technology at the same time once you go introduce it. Last example, Amcor. Packaging. Packaging to product to shipment. When you put something in a specialized package, you've got to be able to track it, you've got to be able to label it, you've got to be able to manage the workflow, you've got to be able to do that dynamically. How many different packages do you get in home delivery where you kind of unwrap it and you go, who thought about wrapping this up that way? Yeah, and then you put it, in the, put it aside and you get to whatever you wanted. But somebody thinks that through. And somebody then thinks through the dynamics of how to ship it and how to make it happen and how to track it. And if it's valuable, they think about that in excess. This is another composable system. It has its own pattern underneath it in terms of how work happens and how workflow goes. Using capabilities like those at Alt Systems, we're able to rapidly prototype, rapidly move to the experience level, rapidly integrate in the back end with existing services, and we give them a composable system that allows them to switch between different types of packaging and client needs for how those packages are managed and the workflow takes place at the same time. Just another example of a different industry doing the same composable mosaic. Every one of these industries has a picture like the one we just showed you for banking. And that picture is the secret sauce of how you need to think about your environment, which is the process we talked about earlier, which is engendering not only your business values, but the process of how you integrate those things together as well. And, and you bring that to life in, in the way that your component uh, compose themselves and how you work at the same time. So what we've talked about today is, one, it's right before lunch. Two, we've talked about that the world has a lot of choices in front of it as you move to this digital platform, but, but you have no choice but to go forward. Either that or you become a flip phone user for the rest of your life. Third, you got to think about the process of how you go do this and how you endear yourself. And fourth, think about patterns. Think about the patterns and the componentization of the model that you pick. Think about how you put that componentization together for your constituents and value and, and stick to it and use it as a component model for how you bring things in and put, put new components in there at the same time. Uh, I am the CEO of Persistent Systems. Uh, I had the honor of accepting this role about six months ago. Some people sometimes ask me, tell me a little bit about Persistent. At any point in time, we're doing 700 projects. We're mostly based here in North America with the work that we do, so we know all of you. Our largest client has an eight bar logo. Our next largest client is one of the largest banks and financial institutions in the United States. Our next largest client is one of the largest provider of network hardware in the world. Our next largest client does accounting and tax software and made a huge jump to the web recently successfully because of our work. Um, so we are in many, many places that you guys see and places you touch and a lot ways that your lives are changed today under the covers, basically getting the job done. Uh, we are about a half a billion dollar company. We have over 10,000 people. We add about 100 people a month to our work because the digital world is driving the economy today and we participate in that world and it's a great place to be. Uh, and uh, we uh, do work in about 20 companies, countries, but we are mostly here today and we work in the industries and verticals and horizontals that you see below. So uh, it's a great experience, a great set of things that we do. Come by and see us. And if you want, come by and hear about our banking accelerators tomorrow. We'll have two of our experts giving a talk. It'll be at 9 a.m. and you guys can join us there. With that, I'm gonna wish you a good lunch and a best of time at the rest of the show. Thank you very much. Chris, that was fantastic. Thank you.